Welcome back and welcome to our conversation that I hope gives you renewed faith in family. Thank goodness the worst of the pandemic is winding down and life is starting to get back to normal. And we're realizing that major milestones that we put on hold or missed along the way, especially for women who really wanted to start a family, time and age are defining factors. You see, at the age of 35, unfortunately for us women, our egg count starts to do a big dive. But science has been a blessing. And according to the head of reproductive medicine at Mount Sinai in New York, he is seeing twice as many women freezing their eggs now than before the pandemic. In other words, women can put their DNA on ice. So when the time comes, they have options. And it was an option that journalist and author Marissa Brown decided to take and document for several magazines. She joins me now live with her personal journey, along with OBGYN Dr. Jessica Shepard. Ladies, great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. Full disclosure, uh, I had my twins thanks to IVF, and I've authored a book on understanding your fertility, and I'm all about promoting egg freezing. So let's get started, all right? Marissa, I want to start with you. Our message here to women, take the pressure off yourselves because you have options now. Absolutely. Uh, I we had spoken before about the fact that, you know, it, you can really um, end up making very huge life decisions based on your age and worries that once you hit 35, you um, will not be able to create the family that you had dreamed of. Uh, you might end up marrying somebody with whom you're not really all that compatible and just feel very rushed in a way. And I write about that, um, about how, you know, I, I wish that I had just known that I could slow down and and take my time and uh, make decisions um, based on, um, you know, <laughs> realizing that I, I could um, actually freeze my eggs and and create that family down the road and that age isn't as big a factor as doctors might make it seem. Right. And, and you and I talked about that. Both of us had pretty bad divorces. I sure did. Uh, my house had flooded. I lost everything. I was 40 and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm never going to have a family. And then, wow, IVF changed my world. And, and I know that it's changed your world too. And Dr. Shepard, I've actually been criticized in the past for writing about this and talking about this and advocating for it because there is a cost involved and not everyone can afford this. So lay out for us now just the newest options for people because in some areas it has gotten a little less expensive and a number of companies are now providing options for you, fertility options within your health care. That's absolutely correct. And I think as we start to have more of these conversations, you will see that the navigation towards uh, egg freezing will really become less of an issue. And especially taking out the stigma of what we think about fertility and what women have as an option for themselves when they think about planning their lives. You know, I applaud the idea of providing women with information about their fertility because there is a really profound misconception about the biological clock. Now, not to take away from aging, we do know with aging, we do start to see a significant amount of decrease in the egg quality that deteriorates with aging. So with that knowledge and with the biology of how a woman's body works in the reproductive system, we really want to look at what are those best timeframes in which we can capture you know, really good egg quality with allowing women the option of time in order to make the decision of when it's right for her to go down the lane of fertility. Right. We might not always have great eggs, but we can carry a baby later in life. So if you've got those eggs frozen, if you have embryos frozen, it gives you a different outlook and different opportunities. So, Marissa, how has egg freezing given you a sense of peace and helped you find more balance with work and love and the possibility of having your own kids now? Yes, definitely. Well, I mean, especially with the pandemic, right, that made everybody feel like time stopped <laughs> and you felt like, oh my goodness, um, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to go to doctor's appointments that I had planned for. Um, and thankfully I was able to work egg freezing and then embryo freezing 
into my schedule during the pandemic while writing a book, actually. And um, I am pretty proud of myself for being able to juggle it all. And i um, very excited by the prospect that doing this, by doing this, I was able to invest in my future fertility. And I feel very supported by a team I've created. Uh, I have an acupuncturist who's incredible, who's a fertility specialist. Highly recommend that. And finding a reproductive endocrinologist with whom you really connect is so important as well. And it just, it feels like something that I have friends doing. I People are talking about it more and more. So it's becoming more normalized. And that in itself, feeling like you're not alone in this is a huge, um, it, it brings a lot of peace of mind in and of itself. Absolutely. Absolutely. We were just looking at some pictures there at Dr. Shepard. Maybe you can talk about this of, you know, you have to give yourself shots and there's protocol you have to go through. There's a process. So if women are now convinced after seeing this segment uh, to, to forge on with freezing, just your advice to choosing the right doctor and understanding the process of what you have to go through. I'm glad you brought up that part of the actual journey of egg freezing because there is a lot that's required, but also into the physical aspect of what's needed for egg freezing and fertility is also the emotional journey. And that's why it's very important when you do choose your infertility specialist to make sure you do your research and educate on what egg freezing is, the process versus going in blind because it can be overwhelming. And when you do choose that provider and infertility specialist that you're gonna work with, you really want to have a team approach as to who's going to be the best team in order to help me through the physical aspect of it or the biological aspect of it, but also the emotional aspect. Now, when we talk about egg freezing and finances, we know it can be a costly process, but again, having an employer possibly looking at your options on what insurance can cover and also making sure that you understand this is an investment. This is really an investment in a long-term game to give you that ability to not have so much anxiety when it comes to planning the ability for you to have a family in the future. And I should also point out before we wrap, it's really been a beautiful thing for cancer patients to be able to freeze their Absolutely. eggs before going through cancer treatment. Marissa, so glad you wrote about it. I love it. You're a great advocate. Dr. Shepard, always appreciate your insight. Thank you, ladies, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Clearly one of my favorite topics. And if you'd like to learn more about developing your whole life fertility plan, I would love for you to check out my book. It would be my honor to help any of you out there wanting to know more about understanding what affects your fertility. And maybe my research and experience can help you too think about building a family when you want to. Coming up, you wouldn't like them when they're angry. That's for sure. Legions of Taylor Swift loyalists setting their sights on Ticketmaster and regulators might not be far behind. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.